Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. Today I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be reviewing the Hardron Steambeck Ultra 2-in-1 airbrush and I'm going to be seeing if it's worth the money. As far as my airbrush experience up to this point goes, I've been using the AB130 from Everything Airbrush which has been nice up to this point but I've decided to upgrade as it just doesn't cut it for some of the projects that I'm doing now. I'll be taking a look at the airbrush as someone looking for a professional airbrush on the lower end of the price spectrum so that you can see how it is for me if you are in the same situation. But even if you're not, then the review will hopefully be beneficial anyway. So that's quite enough talking, let's go ahead and take a look at the airbrush. So when we open up the case we see the airbrush itself along with a 4mm nozzle and needle set and a 5ml cup. Let's uh, take a look at the airbrush in more detail. So here it is. It feels very nice and uh, very light as well. It's also quite nice and small, which can make it easier to paint and getting close to the model. Uh, the trigger is well designed and it's nice and smooth to push down and pull back, as it is of course a double action airbrush. It feels very easy to gradually push down, which can be useful if you want to create different effects. Here's something a cheaper airbrush can't do very well. And uh, from what I can tell from the outside, it seems to be very uh, well made. Uh, let's take it apart and see what's like on the inside. After that I'll run some painting tests and compare them directly with the cheaper airbrush. Okay, to start off I'll just remove the needle so we can get some looks at the inner workings. It's a really easy airbrush to take apart and put together and with some practice it'll be fine for any beginner. Uh, the needle itself is nicely machined which is good to see and looks like it's in really good condition which is great and it's also worth mentioning that the needle can be used in uh, Harder and Steenbeck's Infinity and Evolution lines of airbrushes which is great if you're planning on doing some sort of future upgrade when this one seems like it won't suffice anymore if we just pop the trigger out now pretty easy to do. Take out the spring and here it is, is the trigger mechanism. It's obviously not as uh, beautiful or best made airbrush trigger that's out there. Harder and Steam Mech obviously make much nicer ones for their Evolution and Infinity airbrushes but this one is more than sufficient. It's really comfortable and it works really well. A couple of downsides though with this airbrush are that the cup can't be used for other Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes like the Evolution and Infinity because it just pops straight out rather than screwing. Uh, also the um, nozzle can be quite hard to access while you're painting so if there's like a little bit of paint you need to nip off the end, a little bit of build up then it'll be quite hard because you need to take off the entire assembly and there you have the nozzle there. This is a 0.2mm nozzle. You can buy other Harder and Steenbeck nozzle covers um, that allow you to pinch any build up off. So if you want to make any other investments that's probably a good one to go for. But other than those downsides, I mean it seems like a pretty good airbrush. And let's see if that theory is true with some testing. Okay, I started off by just doing some experimentation with my cheap airbrush. Just doing some lines and marks. And then I moved on to using the uh, Harder and Steenbeck Ultra to try and copy the same things, but also doing a lot more thin lines. Here I just tried doing a thin line that gradually turned into a thick line. And then you can see I'm trying to do some thinner lines. Working out the technique, it didn't take very long to work out the technique. It was pretty easy in the end. Okay, after taking a look at the airbrush itself and comparing it with the cheap one, 
I'd say it's a pretty good upgrade from a budget airbrush. It covers all different line and shape sizes and with the 4mm nozzle set included in the 2-in-1 package, it is able to cover even bigger surfaces faster. If you're a bit shorter on the money side, there is a non-2-in-1 version available for about £50. I'll link all places that you can buy these things in the description, rather than the 2-in-1 which uh, goes for about £89 depending on where you buy it from. I'd really consider this airbrush for an upgrade if you like miniature painting or even smaller scale airbrush art. It really feels smooth to handle and all in all a great buy, even considering its downsides. I really hope you found this video beneficial and has helped you to make a better decision. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!